The topic of this clip is symmetry in probability theory. Symmetry is a useful concept when you need a data or prior model probability. Of course your prior can have been made by previous experiments, but you need a prior in order to update those probabilities anyhow. Use of symmetry can get you up and running, uh, even if you've got nothing more to go on. I'm only going to study this for finite possibilities though, as infinite possibilities can be quite a bit harder to deal with. If you're interesting, uh, interested in that subject, Berger got a chapter on this. Um, also Professor Inge Hallen here in uh, Oslo is publishing a book on the subject, uh, where he also looks at the connection between statistics and physics. The setting here is that we got a finite partition of possibilities and no knowledge that indicates that some possibilities are more plausible than any other. If you can't code for knowledge, you got to code for lack of knowledge. We could relabel the possibilities without changing the plausibility, or vice versa. The symmetric way to deal with this is to let each possibility have the same probability. Since we're contemplating all possibilities and they're mutually exclusive, the probabilities should sum to 1. So each probability must be 1 over the number of possibilities. For instance, the probability of getting, say, a 1 on a throw of a die is the same as getting a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5 or a 6, namely 1 over 6. I can summarize my probabilities by making a graph of them, shown here. Each outcome is shown on the x-axis, and the probabilities are shown on the y-axis. Uh, for symmetric probabilities, the graph will of course be entirely flat. The probability of getting a, say, four of clubs when drawing one card from this deck should be 1 over 52. Seems reasonable, doesn't it? We can combine this with independence to contemplate the outcome of two throws of a die, or throwing two separate dice. Assuming independence, the probability for getting, say, a 2 on the first throw and a 6 on the second is 1 over 6 times 1 over 6, which is equal to 1 over 36. And using symmetry, this will be the probability for any specific combination of two die throws. We can use this to calculate the probability of getting, for instance, a sum of five on the two uh, dice. As such, an outcome can be divided into mutually exclusive combinations, namely one on the first and four on the second, two on the first and three on the second, 3 on the 1st and 2 on the 2nd, and 4 on the 1st and 1 on the 2nd, which will be 4 times 1 over 36, or approximately 11.1%. And you can do this exercise for other sums also. Here's a graph showing the different probabilities for a sum of two uh, die throws. As you can see, while the distribution of each die throw was flat, the distribution of the sum of the two is not. This is because we've added information about summation into the mix. The guiding principle behind this result was to find the level where you've got total ignorance, which means putting symmetry and independence on that level, and then build from there uh, using what you know. By the way, it has a similar graph for the sum of five die throws. Note that this graph seems to have even more structure. That's not so strange as even more information has been added. I'll probably use this type of example again when I'll describe probability distributions. But going back to the deck of cards, what if you consider that I may have previously taken out one of the cards in this deck and replaced it with another from another deck? There may now be one type of card missing from this deck, and one type which can be found twice here. Yeah. It could be even worse, I could have replaced several cards. Maybe I've even got only one type of card in the entire deck. Let's call uh, these scenarios a salted deck. 
So what is now the probability for getting, for instance, a 4 of clubs, a 3 of spades or a queen of hearts? Well, a frequentist, at least a naive one, would say that the probability is unknown. By using probability as a measure of information and plausibility, you get a little further. Of course, you haven't learned anything that makes either the four of clubs, three of spades or queen of hearts more likely. So the answer is still 1 over 52. To be sure, uh, if I've shuffled and resampled many times, I would find that the rate of different outcomes are different. And with different models for what may have been removed and inserted, uh, I could in such a case update my probabilities and gradually make better predictions than 1 over 52 for each outcome. Uh, while the salted deck model itself does not prefer one card over the other, some submodels will. But from the principle of symmetry, you know that this distribution of model probabilities should be symmetric. And when predicting the first card, no more information is available and you're stuck with 1 over 52. Which means that if you do not know if the card has been salted or not, drawing one card will not tell you anything. Whatever the outcome, it's irrelevant data. I'll use this example in a later video, so this point can be well worth remembering. Similarly, this is a loaded die. There's one outcome that's more probable than the rest. However, as long as you have no clue what that outcome is, your probability for any outcome will still be 1 over 6 as before. So if you do not know if the die is loaded, a single throw will not help you there. Of course, if you partition your model for loaded die into loaded for 1, loaded for 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, uh, the outcome will let you adjust the probabilities for those submodels, but the overall prob probability for the outcome will be the same as for the unloaded model. If you were to repeat the experiment, you may be able to get somewhere though, but that's a story for another video. The concept of symmetry, to code for lack of information, can be expanded into the concept of entropy. Entropy, which found its way from statistical physics to information theory, can also be used in probability theory, as it measures how much information you've got. High entropy means little available information, and low entropy means you've got a lot of information. In order to find the probability distribution that codes for a given set of information, and nothing more, you find the so-called maximum entropy distribution for that set of information. As mentioned in the previous clip, you don't want to code for more information than you've got. I'm not going to describe entropy further here, but simply state that the maximum entropy distribution for a finite set of outcomes is the symmetric one which I've described here in this clip. A little qualifier at the end. Examples of total lack of information can be hard to come by. For instance, in the loaded die example, you may know that uh, the outcome 1 or 6 is often preferred to other outcomes, which means that the symmetry of plausible outcomes has been broken. Similarly, there are types of cards that are more preferable than others, which may break the symmetry in the salted deck 